So hi there, it's Katie at iSight Design and I'm here with Nick Brunzi from Esri. He's the Chief Customer Officer over at Esri in Redlands, California. And Nick will be joining us as an agent of change at Delight in October. So hi Nick, it's great to chat with you today. Yeah, hey Katie, it's great to you know actually see your face uh, and hear your voice rather than simply email back and forth. So great, great to finally meet you. Yeah, you too. So um, I'm hoping today that we can uh, let the attendees get to know you a little bit better and give them a little sneak peek into what you're going to talk about at the conference. So um, I guess the first things first, um, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and what you're doing with Esri. Um, well, let's see. I guess I'll, maybe I'll do the work thing first, and then we can we can probe into my personal. Life. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, with Esri, uh, I have been here a um, I guess in the technology world, I've been here a very long time. Uh, as I jokingly say, I had hair when I started. Uh, <laughs> way to put it. Um, so I've done a myriad of roles, uh, always involved with customers. Uh, I came in as an, as an instructor, done support, some product engineering. Uh, I, I manage uh, our educational teams, our support groups. We have a press that writes books. Uh, and then uh, about a year ago, uh, we embarked on this customer experience activity. Uh, and then if, you know, basically now I have the role of the chief, cu chief customer officer. Uh, so that's you know essentially what I do the however many hours of the day. Um, when I'm not here, uh, busting my butt because even after 44 years, Esri is a is a work hard, play hard uh, kind of place. Uh, in winters, I'm usually skiing. I love to get out of here to go ski, um, which is always funny. Oh, you know, you live in Southern California and you like skiing. I'm like I don't ski in Southern California. <laughs> yeah. um, but you're not too far from like. Squaw and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right? yeah, we go up to Utah a lot, or even up to Canada awesome. and stuff. And uh, so yeah, you know, really try to get and recharge. Uh, and then during the year, uh, I do something that's a, a little different. Is uh, I've got a car that I take out to the racetrack, uh, and I basically I, I, you know drive in high performance driving events about uh, twice a month. Uh, so it's another one completely different than the technology. Uh, so it's cool because for me, it's like I have this, you know, we're this very te technological engineering focused company. Uh, my job has to do with customers, which is fantastic because of the human element. Uh, and then for my own personal life, I can get out and get completely away from technology. Uh, so I like the, it's, it's, it's a happy mix for me. That's great. Definitely good to unwind and step back a little bit. Um, actually, you know, let me let me step back a little here too. Um, you know, we have Starbucks and Zipcar, um, also speak at Delight, and they're a little bit more um, household names. So. Yeah. For people that may not know, um, can you explain what Esri does? Yeah, we are. Um, I actually kind of I, I laughed when you guys invited me too because I'm like, oh, you have all these wonderful people from wonderful companies, and then there's us. Well, <laughs> I mean, I just read some really <laughs> awesome article. I want to say on like Forbes the other day, or, or oh, yeah. maybe it was Fast Company that you yeah. know called you guys like the Facebook of mapping. So yeah. that that's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, what we are, I always I, just, I like to say we are the uh, largest privately held software company no one has ever heard of. Uh, and we're in the process of changing that. Actually, we're, we have a. We've, and the reason we were never really heard of is we had a philosophy of uh, be interested, not interesting. Um, so basically, be interested in what our customers need, and not necessarily be an interesting, flashy company. Uh, but we're starting to change that because we know the impact of what we're doing. We need to broaden it. What we do is fundamentally kind of with the vision of our owner uh, and founder, which has to, the idea that about geography and that geography you can use it and you can use spatial data and analysis and ask fundamental questions to essentially make the world a better place. Um, and it isn't necessarily an environmental piece. It's anything that you have to do. We are really focused on a sustainable planet, which means you know you have a balance of industry and government and people uh, and in the environment and they all have to work we all have to live together. Uh, so our technology is a platform. Uh, that people essentially use to make decisions for anything that involves space. Uh, and yeah, we've been in business for 44 years doing this. Excellent. So, um, so tell us a little bit about your team and your and your role as chief customer officer at Esri. The yeah, my team, and it's kind of interesting because I've been doing some stuff with the CXPA, which is the Customer Experience Professional Association. They're oh yeah, how big's your team? I'm like, um. It's kind of me. <laughs> it's, well, it's me. It's, we have a business analyst who was a wo wonderful woman uh, who used to be a director of customer experience at HP. And then most of our team, there's about, depending on the day, there's between maybe 50 or 70 people that are doing something related to customer experience that I have got a very kind of quiet hand in guiding. Um, the majority of them don't work directly for me. Uh, so I essentially, I, to some extent, I have two jobs at Esri. My day job is still 
doing with dealing with education and support. Um, and then I joke, my night job is customer experience. Um, so I, with, the, with the education and support piece, I can pull some people who are already working for me to do some work. But a lot of what we're doing is cross silo. So I, I get a lot of resources from the other areas of the company. Uh, and it's just a really great piece. It's, it's just the company is so customer focused that it's not a it's not a shock when we talk about the things we want to do. Uh, and people really step up uh, to say, okay, what can we do with these initiatives, and how can we make you know the experience the customer has better. Mm -hmm. Great. I mean, it sounds like uh, you and Leah will sit perfectly on this agents of change um, stage. I mean, both of you are kind of like this UX team of one in a way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm really interested in hearing his uh, his talk because it's that same, and that's actually almost. And not to be hubristic, I think a lot of my career has been change agent like. Um, mm -hmm. I'm try always trying to evolve. Uh, I, you know, the, I, I always say I'm going to be here as long as I'm interested in doing what we're doing for our customers. Uh, in order to do that, I have to change the company uh, every day. Uh, so that's yeah, it's it's a, it's a great role actually. Great. So um, you know, given that you're at this in this customer experience role, um, where do you see what do you see as the relationship between customer experience and user experience? Uh, it's a really great. They, I think they have a really great partnership. Uh, we traditionally, if I talk about kind of us, we traditionally didn't have UX. Uh, you had people that had the background, but we never really had a formal UX um, activity with the things that we did as a company. A, a little after we started the customer experience piece, we actually created you know, an actual design center, and we brought in people that actually have UX as a background. Um, and what's great is we've got them engaged. You know, they're very, very close to me and the team that I work with. Um, and then we just we engage together. So we're doing some projects. Um, you know, most a lot of it at the moment is web work, uh, but there are things we're trying to do to make the customer experience better. And how do I do that? Is I have to improve the user experience. So a lot of it I see is C CX is kind of a broad customer journey piece. And when you finally get down to a touch point, when there's a human being interacting with another human being or a human being interacting with a piece of technology, then I need a user. I need I need UX. Because at that, at that point, it's this interpersonal or per, personal technology piece that what is that experience going to be like? Uh, and it's couched within the overall customer journey. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting distinction. Um, I don't think very many people necessarily pay, pay heed to. Um, they tend to blend a little bit together, it seems yeah. like. So um, that's a really interesting distinction. When you're talking about creating customer experience at an organization like Esri, what are some of the challenges that you come across? Uh, the biggest challenges we have, um, some of which I won't, I won't give here because I'll wait till my talk because some of them are kind of interesting. Uh, the easiest is, is we are there are so many smart people here, and we're such an organic organization. So being privately held, we're very flat. Um, our kind of philosophy is you hire smart people, um, and if you hire a lot of smart people, they tend to do smart things, but they may not be coordinated. Um, so that's kind of the biggest problem. Like a, a perfect example we have is um, our desktop technology you can trial, uh, and we have other products, SaaS technologies you can trial, and server technologies, and extensions that do different spatial things like network routing. And, uh, but if you were our customer when we started this project, you would have a different experience for every single one of those technologies you would try to access. Um, I mean, really disparate because they were built by different teams. Uh, so that's the that's the biggest challenge that we have on CX is to say, yeah, you guys are really smart, but let's work on this together in a scalable way that we're giving a consistent face of who we are um, to our customers. Mm -hmm. And so you say that you you know you're aiming to bring in all these really smart people. How are you enabling those teams to continuously improve on the customer experience and and the user interactions that they're creating? Uh, a lot of it has to do with you know, we've got now we've got these UX design teams, so they're really getting out to um, they're being access, accessed by so many different groups in the company now. So even what we've done, uh, which may not be shocking for anyone in, in the field who's going to come to this conference, but we didn't really have UX involved in our software design, um, and now we've got basically every design team, every every software development team is going to have a UX designer with them uh, to actually say, okay, well, how are we going to build these technologies? How are we going to build these web presences? Um, so that's so they're being taken in by the engineering team. So that's kind of cool. So I don't have to we don't have to fight that fight, so to speak. 
um, a lot of the rest of it is to really kind of inspire and empower people. Um, so the people understand it's important when they see the differences and they see kind of where we're falling down for our customers. And what actually the easiest thing I've been able to provide is I call it air cover. So someone can go ask for something from one silo to another, and if there's resistance, I basically say, let me know and I'll come in and help fix it. Um, the great thing I can say is in the year and a half we've been doing this, I've never once had to do that. Um, so, I, so I offer it, but I've never, it's always been when people show each other kind of what they're asking for and what we're doing, um, you know, that isn't a great customer experience in certain areas, people really like, oh yeah, we got to fix this. How do we fix this? Um, so a lot of it, again, is a, kind of around the organic nature of the company. Uh, I'll, what I do, I have another term, I infect people with the CX bug. Uh, and then they go back to their organization, and it's their ideas, and then they basically infect the rest like a virus. Um, because we're not a top-down organization at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't give a directive of, oh, we're going to do CX or UX, and we're going to change the world. It really has to come kind of in middle, middle management and, and from below. People need to believe in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I inspire people about CX, and then they go inspire their peers. Gotcha. Um, so I've heard um, about this one Esri experience. Can you tell me a little bit about that? <laughs> um, this is the biggest project. Well, it's not even really a project. It's the um, this is going to be C this is CX on steroids, basically. <laughs> so <laughs> we have um, so we are a U.S.-based company with ten offices throughout the U.S. But we have eighty offices or distributors throughout the world. So we sell pretty much on every continent, including in our in Antarctica. We don't have an office there, but we sell there. <laughs> um, Excellent. And so think about that: is that you can get our technology in, you know, and you can get it in France, you can get it, in, you know, Vietnam, you can get it in Japan, China, you can get it in Saudi Arabia. So you've got all these languages, cultures, and everything. What one of our positive pieces, because we always have a local presence, you've got people that are helping our, you know, selling technology, servicing technology, teaching and supporting, they're all in that culture. And they're all in that local time zone and, and they're, they're, you know, they can come out to your office or your site to help you out. And it's been a real powerful thing for our company for a very long time. What we're dealing with though is the idea of a global customer experience. So you can be in any one of those places that I, I referenced and you'll have the same experience. Now it won't be identical because culturally it can't be. Um, but what we're trying to do is that you can be anywhere at any time with any device uh, and have the same experience with us from a technology perspective. We're also trying to do the same from the human side. You know, so how do you get your support? How do you get your education? Uh, how, do the, how do our services work? Um, so we're basically trying to coordinate, uh, to some extent, 80 different entities uh, to, to basically play nice together. Um, and uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, and mm -hmm. we're just kind of doing it bit by bit. We're starting with a project called My Esri, which collapses a whole bunch of about six different web properties we have into a single personalized and organizational property. So we're going to our initial release. I mean, it's essentially it's, it's kind of cooked for the U.S. We're hoping to launch it in November, and then we're actually going to begin to add countries to it. So the first we're actually doing like our first pass is uh, we're doing like um, like probably actually I'm not sure what we're going to do. We've got a couple, it's, still up for, it's still up for debate with our international team. But the idea is we're going to phase out worldwide into those organizations that essentially are ESRI in that company, uh, actually in that country. And they will experience basically their in-country in ESRI just as if you were in the U.S. Uh, doing the same thing. Um, so that's, that's the big work we're doing. We're doing a lot of small work too, but that's the really yeah. big work we're doing. That's incredible. I mean, 80 different countries. Um, you know, I had a few... Um, attendees asking me if we would be talking about unifying experiences globally. So I know a lot of people will be very interested to hear a little bit about that too. Yeah, I'm probably going to hit, I've got, I was just thinking about that as I've been kind of developing my thoughts about what I'm going to talk about. And that's kind of hit me because we just really, really started with the internet. And, but we've been talking about it for a while, but now we're going to make it real. Um, mm -hmm. So it's exciting, you know. And I'm like, oh, I should, as, as I'm talking about kind of what we're doing with CX, I should add that on there. That, oh yeah, by the way, this isn't just like in the U.S., it's this global thing, and there's all kinds of fun things to do with that. Um, right. So yeah, I'll be talking about that, and then of course anybody who wants to ask, I'm happy to talk anything about CX to anybody. <laughs> awesome. So what role, um, you guys just recently had your user conference um, last month, was it? Yeah. Um, 
So what role does that have in kind of bringing together that global community? Oh, it is, um, it's a love fest, is the easiest way to put it. Uh, you so, had something like 18,000 or something? Uh, no, that, we, 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 we usually, depending on the years and the, you know, the economy kind of hit people for, you know, travel and, you know, okay. the idea of also, you're going to go to a conference in San Diego, you know, like really you're going to go to a conference in San Diego. <laughs> right. um, so that's trouble for some users, especially like say in the government. Um, but we, we, we generally anywhere from about 14 to 15.5 is what we get. I forget exactly what we had this year. Uh, and it is, it's from all over the world. Uh, it's a combination of people that have been our customers for 20 years and people who just became our customers. Uh, and we really set up the experience. Um, I mean, it's a really rich environment. Uh, and we just try to make as many connections between our customers, many connections between us. Uh, because because it's local to us, you know, we have our engineers down there. We've got our marketing, our sales. I mean, the the, the face of Esri in, in its entirety is at the conference uh, and able to interact. Uh, and we use it for a lot of feedback. Um, the whole a lot of it is just about listening and how can we help and what can we do better. Um, and then the, you know, and then those hey, you know, and thank you for doing what you do with our stuff. Uh, we have actually a map gallery. In um, there's a sale area which is kind of indoor outdoor at San Diego at the convention center, and basically our customers will submit uh, for judgment, you know, cartographic representations and different things, and it's kind of cool as an employee because you go up there and you get to walk around and you get to see the things that people are doing all over the world with what we build. Um, so it's a really cool event for us because we actually kind of come out of where we are and go, wow, like we want people to make a difference, but people really make a difference uh, with this stuff. So it's a really energizing event. And part of what we want to do with MyEsri is allow you to have that experience all year. Um, so we've got a lot of communities, some of them are disparate, but part of what we're trying to do is say, okay, you've got this great, you know, um, anchor event, which is the, the user conference. And then some people also go to our developer conference. Or depending what market you're in, you might go to a utilities conference or a petroleum or you know local government piece. What we want to do is say, okay, how do we create your experience so that it's a 365 experience um, and that you are part of a community that isn't just us, it's all the people that are doing the great things that they do. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. A, a love fest of 14,000 people. That's yes. Insane. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Um, um, and we've had people come out, like, you know, because we'll get new partners, and, and they, yeah, just, they just kind of go, like, really? Like, this is insane. <laughs> That's extraordinary. And, yeah, it's, 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 uh, and it, it, it's physically draining for us because there's just so much energy um, that occurs. Uh, so, like, a lot, not a lot. There's a good, decent percentage of people who are now, uh, they have time off because they just work so hard to get everything to the conference and. You know, like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm going to be off for six weeks. Like, I got out of here. Yeah, just take a breather and, um, and yeah. recuperate. Yeah, yeah. I, I know then, the feeling. I mean, yeah. you know, Delight, obviously, we're trying to build the yeah. same, like, love fest and high energy vibe, but um, not quite to that scale. So yeah. <laughs> I, know the, I know the feeling. Um, so have you been up to the conference in past years, Delight? No. So I've been up to your offices, but I haven't actually yes. been to the conference. Excellent. So what are you looking forward to most about the conference? Uh, I'm really looking forward, actually, to, I mean, I want to just meet people, obviously, and then I really would, you know, I want to hear about what people are dreaming in CX, that's going to be in UX, and how that applies to the work that I do in CX. I want to share, you know, the bigger picture of CX in some cases. Um, and then, of course, you know, my fellow speakers, like, you know, Jared actually spoke at our developer summit in March. Uh, so I'm really looking to see kind of what he's going to say, because you're a different audience than who we were. Um, and then, you know, Margo, and it's, it's, there's, there's a couple of different of my fellow speakers I'm kind of really interested in, because they're, they're not simply UX, and by, I don't mean that as a bad thing. It's just they've got a kind of a broader piece that kind of feathers into the work that I do um, that we might have a little more in common. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward. But all of it looks really tremendous. Excellent. Well, we're really looking forward to having you, and I'm excited to hear your talk. Um, and there will certainly be plenty of opportunities for you to meet um, you know, fellow speakers and then attendees, too. We've got tons of great networking things lined up. If you've um, seen the communications about it, we're like planning our, our wine reception, our welcome party. So there will be plenty of ops for that. <laughs> so anyways, it's been great chatting and uh, hearing a little bit about what you're doing. So I look forward to seeing you in a few months. And uh, we'll, we'll talk soon, then.
Great. Thank you so much uh, for the question. Great game. Great seeing you. Great talking to you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in Portland. Excellent. See you soon. Take care. Bye.